Hello and welcome to this film which is all about shells, subshells and orbitals. It's the third in a series of four films about higher level atomic structure for the IB chemistry course and as promised in the previous film uh, here we're going to be looking in a bit more detail um, at where electrons are in atoms. So hopefully by the end of this film you'll know the difference between a shell, a subshell and an orbital. And you'll know how to define an orbital actually and uh, you'll be able to describe where an electron is in an atom by using quantum numbers so that is to say you'll be able to state or describe as I've just said um, which shell, subshell or orbital an electron is in by using a series of numbers and also you'll know what these orbitals look like and hopefully you'll be able to sketch some of the simpler looking orbitals the S and P orbitals Okay, I'm going to start with a little bit of quantum mechanics, which is not tested. Okay, um, you might wonder why I'm telling you about it if it's not tested. Well, it's because hopefully it's going to give you a, a, a way of remembering how many subshells and orbitals there are in a shell. Um, don't worry too much if you don't get fully to grips with quantum mechanics. I'll always remember my university lecturer, Nick Green, saying to the class in the first lesson on quantum mechanics, Okay, everyone, don't worry if you don't understand what we're going to do in this topic. Some of the finest minds in physics have uh, dismissed it as nonsense and couldn't get their heads around it at all, but they still managed to work with it. So uh, bearing in mind those wise words and bearing in mind that it's also not tested, um, let's just introduce um, quantum numbers, which, uh, when applied to an electron, will tell us where an electron is in an atom. Okay? An electron will have a principal quantum number n, and this can be any whole number greater than zero. It will have an angular momentum quantum number l, which can be any whole number from zero to n minus one. So if its principal quantum number was two, it could have an angular momentum quantum number of naught or one, but not two. And an electron will also have a magnetic quantum number ml, uh, which can be any whole number from minus L to L. So if my angular momentum quantum number L was 1, then I could have a magnetic quantum number of minus 1, 0, or 1. And my spin quantum number, because I'm an electron, uh, ms, is always going to be minus a half or plus a half, and this basically tells us which way an electron is spinning in an orbital, but we'll look at that a bit more in the next film. Okay, first of all, Something we already know quite a lot about is the fact that electrons are found in shells and we can describe what shell an electron is in by giving it its principal quantum number n. So if it's in the first shell, its principal quantum number is 1. If it's in the second, it's 2 and so on and so forth. Okay, So that's something we already know. But what we started to look at in the previous film was evidence for the fact that there might be some kind of more detail um, in where an electron is within a shell. So there might be something smaller than a shell in an electron, uh, in an atom, where electrons can be. And these are called subshells. And we say what subshell an electron is in by giving it its angular momentum quantum number, L. Now, you might remember that in the first shell, there are two atoms. And in fact, there's only one subshell in the first shell. How could we decide that there would only be one subshell? Well, if n is 1, then L can only be 0. L can only have one value, so there must only be one subshell. And we call this subshell the S subshell. The second shell, where n equals 2, L can be 0, but it can also be 1. So if it was 0, you'd be in the S subshell in the second shell. If your angular momentum quantum number was 1, you'd be in the P subshell in the second shell. You couldn't be in any other subshell because there aren't any others. There's only two possible values of L, so there are only two subshells in the second shell. If you're in the third period, or the fourth here, but if you've got three, if you've got electrons in three different shells, and your or if you're an electron in the third shell, indeed, your principal quantum number is 3. Your angular momentum quantum number can now be naught, 1, or 2. 
So there are three different values of L you could have, so there are three different subshells. And if you're in the third shell, that means you can have you can be an electron in the S subshell, you can be an electron in the P subshell, or you can be an electron in the D subshell. As we'll see, if your principal quantum number is four, you can also have electrons in an F subshell. And in fact there's G and H subshells, which all atoms actually have, um, but aren't filled in any atom that we know of. Okay, so they're the subshells, all right? And really, it's uh, not important to describe electrons in subshells higher than the D subshell. So we'll stop at D really here. But remember, the quantum numbers or the values that a quantum number can have are telling us how many different subshells there will be within a shell. Okay, now let's look at this next slide to see um, what detail there is within a subshell. So we can go even finer than that, okay? And we'll look at things called orbitals. Now, the definition of what an orbital is, is an important one to know. It's a region of space, space where there is a probability of finding an electron, okay? Now let's imagine that my electron that I'm talking about its principal quantum number is 3. So in other words, it's in the third shell. Okay? Its angular momentum quantum number can be 0, 1, or 2. So it can be either in an S subshell, or in a P subshell, or in a D subshell. Now the orbitals in those subshells are very different looking. Okay? S subshells are spherical. Okay? So this, they're not circular, they're spherical. Okay? Um, P subshells look like kind of dumbbells. D subshells look like kind of two dumbbells put together, unless you're the D Z squared orbital, um, which has a kind of donut around its waist. Okay, but we don't need to remember what D orbitals look like in a test or exam. What we do need to know is how to sketch the S and P orbitals. Okay, now how do we know how many orbitals there will be within a subshell? Well, if my angular momentum quantum number is zero, then my magnetic quantum number can be minus L, zero, or L. Okay, so in other words, it has to be zero. So there is only one orbital in the S subshell. Okay, as we can see. In the P subshell, where L is one, ML can be minus one, 0 or 1. So that tells me there must be three orbitals within the P subshell. Okay, so three different areas. Of, if I'm an electron in the 3P subshell, there are three different orbitals I could be occupying. Okay, if I'm a D orbital, if I'm a D, if I'm in the D subshell as an electron, I could be in one of five different orbitals. Okay, and we'll see how these orbitals relate to the periodic table in a little while. Okay, but basically, what we need to know about shells, subshells, and orbitals is that an orbital is a region of space where we can find an electron. Orbitals are found in subshells, and subshells are found within shells. And we also need to know how many of these orbitals and how many of these subshells there are in each shell. Okay, and hopefully, as I say, the quantum numbers will just give us a handy way of remembering that. Okay, but you might choose to remember it in different ways. So hopefully now you understand the difference between shells, subshells, and orbitals. You understand how they're linked to quantum numbers for an electron, and also you know that how to sketch the shape of S and P orbitals. I might just go back very quickly to that previous slide and just point something out about these P orbitals. Um, as we can see here, there is um, three of them, as we've just discussed. One of them lies on the x-axis and is called the px orbital. One of them lies on the z-axis, so if these are three-dimensional axes, and it's called pz. And one of them lies on the y-axis, and it's therefore called py. Okay, so three-dimensional axes, if you're asked to sketch the three different p orbitals, that's how they're different. They're all the same shape, they're all this kind of dumb figure of eight or dumbbell shape. Okay, the X, Y, and Z simp simply denotes which axis they lie on. I should have said that earlier, really, rather than getting to the summary. But anyway, if there are any questions 
um, from this film, and and I suppose it being a a bit weird, really, in the in the in the, in the sense that it involves quantum mechanics. I wouldn't be surprised if you had a few questions. Please feel free to comment and um, post a comment on YouTube or come and find me to ask questions. <laughs>